All right, for sake of time, we'll go ahead and get started because we have a packed agenda. So hi everyone, my name is Courtney O'Reilly. I am the vice chair of the TUN steering committee and I'm currently a consultant at Code for America on their navigator program. I'm really excited to be facilitating this session, mostly because this, this type of panel discussion is exactly what I come to Vitacon for. Hearing what amazing work and uh, learnings that other people have already put together to make my job just a little less hard. Uh, ever since the first Vitacon, I've found these uh, types of sessions to be really helpful, knowing that I probably don't have the resources to do them myself. So I'm really, again, just excited to be able to share some of our national partners and the works and projects that they're engaged in currently, um, not to mention just the stellar minds that are coming into today's discussion. I want to just um, really quickly, as I'm sure you're probably familiar with um, some of the housekeeping items, uh, this webinar will be recorded and will be made available to registers or registrants. Um, all webinar attendees are muted upon entry to ensure sound uh, quality. Please keep yourself muted while our presenters are speaking. Uh, we will have time for Q&A at the end, so, but just until then, please try to keep yourself mute. I will try to do the same because I find myself typing vigorously and people find it annoying. Uh, make sure that you ask a question or share your thoughts anytime by typing into the box. I will be doing my best to kind of copy and pasting those questions over to another doc so we can bring them back up during the Q&A session, just because most of our presenters won't be able to answer those questions in, at, um, right when you're asking them, but we'll make sure to get back to them at the Q&A session. And then if you're experiencing any technical issues, please make sure to email Justin, who is the most incredible person. Um, any of your questions, he's really holding it down and making sure that we're all, uh, we're all ready to go. And then just wanna kind of quickly go over today's agenda. So the first is, you know, right now, I'm trying to set the scene and make sure that we're all here and understand what's gonna go on. The first presentation we're gonna hear from is Propel. Next, we're gonna hear from the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities. And then finally, Consumer Finance, Financial Protection Bureau. Um, and then at the end, that's where we'll get to uh, um, some of the questions that you've entered in the chat or new questions that you have after all three presented. And then we'll do some wrap up and next steps. This is one of those sessions where we're not gonna do breakout rooms, um, but we wanna just kind of all come together and learn from each other and our presenters. It is my honor to be able to introduce some of our speakers today, but I feel like I want to do them justice. And so I want to hand it over to them in the order uh, of our workshop speakers, starting with uh, my good friend and colleague, Roxy. Roxy, if you want to introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. Roxy Keynes with the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities. I work with the Get It Back campaign, and I'm happy to share this space with you. Perfect. And Julieta? Hello, everyone. My name is Julieta Coyer, and I work for Propel, where I lead our policy research work and communicating that to external audiences like yourselves. And Lasan and JC. Hi, everybody. My name is Lasan Alfune, and I work with CFPB's Community Affairs section under the Consumer Education Office. Uh, our section focuses on working with economically vulnerable consumers and the organizations and advocates who serve them. Um, and I'm coming to talk about our tax time savings initiative. Um, and JC, I'm going to let you introduce yourself. He's also joining us um, on behalf of ICF and that work. Yes, uh, I'm JC Craig. I am a consultant to the CFPB for the tax time savings and community savings initiatives. Um, really pleased to be here. I'll mostly be around for the question and answer session later on. Thanks. Awesome. All right. So jumping right in, we are going to start our presentation with Julieta from Propel. Thank you. Uh, I'm just going to share a presentation with you. Um, can everyone see that? You're good yeah. to go. Okay, great. Okay. Um, so as I said, my name is Julieta and I work at Propel. So at Propel, we build modern, respectful, and effective technology that helps Americans with limited income improve their financial health. And we do this 
through an app called Providers. Uh, it was formerly known as Fresh ET. And the Providers app allows uh, people to um, really see all of their streams of income to help them get through the month every month in one place. We're the only app where people can manage government benefits side by side with uh, a banking product. So um, if people are receiving benefits like SNAP perhaps on an EBT card, they can see their EBT card balance at any time in the app and they can also um, fund a free debit card and you know, maybe get their cash benefits from government there and see it all in one place. There are also opportunities for them to save on things they already spend on, uh, earn through finding new employment, and also find out everything they need to know about uh, benefits through our benefits hub. And um, what I'm doing today in this, this session, why I'm going first is sort of setting the stage in terms of um, how the population that you all serve at, at Vita Sites is faring based on what we know about our, our user base. Um, our user base, I think, is pretty reflective of uh, the community you serve, maybe a little different in some ways. So I wanted to share a bit about uh, who our users are. We have over 5 million monthly active users across the country. Uh, they're in all 50 states and three territories. We estimate about 2 million people use the app on any given day. Most of our users have children under 18 and the vast majority are women. And overall, we would estimate that about one in four staff households are on our platform. Uh, and the information I'm gonna share right now comes from regular surveys that we do on a monthly basis of our users. Um, so I'm gonna share um, you know, some of the difficulties that people are facing, but then also uh, how we're seeing the child tax credit, which you're all helping people access, um, is having uh, a positive impact. Uh, so first, uh, a little bit on housing insecurity. Uh, our users are increasingly living in unstable housing. You can see a trend line over time here over the past year, but essentially things have been getting worse in particular over the summer. Last month, we reached a new peak uh, in terms of the portion of users who say they're living in unstable housing, almost 12% in August reported that. Uh, moreover, 13% uh, of our users think they're not going to be able to stay in their housing for the next 30 days. Uh, that was this month. And another 49% uh, didn't pay their September rent on time, which doesn't bode well for this trend. Uh, we also see racial disparities um, across these, these uh, metrics. Our users also uh, face utility shutoffs uh, at an increasing rate. Uh, in September, almost 11% of users said their utilities have been shut off in the past month. Um, and again, we see racial disparities here. Black users were almost twice as likely as white users to report this. Um, eviction, the eviction rates uh, are also on the rise among our user base. Um, over 5% for the first time in September reported being evicted in the past month. And we also have 4% um, of users reporting that they're sleeping in a shelter uh, at least one night uh, in the previous month. Going into financial insecurity a little bit, uh, a question we ask people every month is, have you had to borrow or use credit in the last 30 days to cover your expenses? This, this portion, um, this rate has been really high you know, throughout the time we've been asking it, but uh, it was reached a new high in this month in September with over 60% of people reporting that this is the case. Uh, moreover, more than half of people say they have less than $25 on hand. About half of people think that that money is only gonna last them one or two days. And we're serving people at the beginning of the month. So uh, that's a little more dire even. That the money they have on hand, they don't think it's gonna last quite that long. Um, and finally, to talk a little bit about food insecurity, um, people have been reporting things like that they're skipping meals, eating less, visiting a food pantry, or relying on other people for meals um, at a rate of between you know, you know, a quarter to about 40% uh, in any given month. And um, in September this month, 44% of our users thought that they were, said that they were running low or uh, out of most things that they need in their house. So it's an incredibly challenging time for our user base um, and for low-income people across the country, as we know. Uh, the good news is that 
it looks like the child tax credit monthly advance payments, which have been going out, started going out in July, are really making a difference. Um, we have observed that parents who've received the child tax credit payments in July and August were more likely to think that they could stay in their current housing for the next 30 days. They were less likely to have been evicted. They were less likely to have slept in a shelter in the past month, less likely to say they have under $25 on hand and more likely to report that they have everything they need in their homes. Uh, we also uh, asked people to uh, share how they spent their child tax credit and how it affected their household in their own words. And so here, I'm happy to share a few quotes with you um, from what people said. Um, like this user here reports, several people mentioned avoiding uh, eviction, foreclosure, or utility shutoffs thanks to a child tax credit uh, payment. So this user in Michigan says, I put everything I could of the full amount into a mortgage savings. A certified letter came two days ago to start foreclosure. A couple of more quotes to share with you. Um, this user in Georgia says, I'm not sure what I would have done without it. it pays a good portion of my bills. And from someone in California, um, talking about how it's helpful, but also the impact is somewhat limited by the circumstances they're in. It's helped out a little, but not drastically. The pandemic has seriously affected us and the rent prices being raised have caused our family of six to be homeless. Sometimes we sleep in our car or at a hotel when shelters, when shelters are full. Um, so another part of our work is trying to track how many people are getting these advanced payments and um, identify if possible who's missing out and why and try to help them access um these payments that are clearly making such a difference um so here i have some information from the july and august payments um the good news is that in august we estimate that 83 percent of uh people who have children under 18 who are presumably eligible received the august payments that's up four percentage points from july and we um doing some math there estimate that that's about an additional 440,000 children that are living in providers' households that got um, the child tax credit you know, from July to August. However, um, we're still estimating that about 14% of eligible households haven't received, didn't receive the August payment. And um, to the left here is just how we, how we make this estimate. We have like a pop-up survey that comes in the app for people who say they have kids under 18 that they see about a week after the payment date. Um, we know a little bit about who is missing out, it would appear. Um, Spanish speakers, for example, um, were less likely to report receiving the child tax credit payment over the past couple of months. 69% um, of people who completed our survey in English uh, reported receiving the August payment, and only 54% of those who completed it in Spanish said the same. Uh, we are also seeing that users who describe their current employment status as unable to work uh, are less likely to have, uh, to have received the child tax credit payments. Um, only 49% of users uh, received that August payment uh, who said that they were not able to work. Um, and we're constantly working on how we can help people access this much needed help. Uh, we have several places in the app where people can get more information in that benefits hub that I described at the beginning. We have a whole section on the child tax credit payment. It includes a calculator like the one you're seeing here all the way to the left. We also try to help set people up for success as much as possible before they enter into the non-filer portal or before they enter the CTC um, update portal that the IRS has created. Um, really just trying to guide them through what can unfortunately be kind of a difficult process. Um, and we also have some external facing resources like childtaxcredit.com, which we launched in July ahead of the first payments going out. And it has an FAQ and um, a calculator function as well. And I think I'm at time. So I uh, would be happy to take your questions later and you can check out joinpropel.com slash learn. And there you can see, um, the kind of research that I presented here, like infor information from these monthly surveys and other um, kind of more in-depth reports. Thank you. Thank you so much, Julieta. I I found myself definitely kind of like, oh, like some of that information is always hard to, to hear, but it's really important in how we uh, use our resources and move forward. 
Yeah, thank you for being on time. That's always great. I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to our next pr presenter, Roxy, from the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. So I am preparing to share my screen. And as I mentioned before, I work with the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities. And if you're not familiar, the Center is a nonprofit, nonpartisan research and policy institute, and we pursue federal and state policies designed to reduce poverty and inequality in equitable and effective ways. For over 30 years, the center has had a special focus on helping people get refundable tax credits and free tax filing assistance. That is the Get It Back campaign. And the Get It Back campaign is a national effort. And we work with a network of diverse partners. I recognize some of your names. And I'm excited today to share with you some of the resources that we have available at taxoutreach.org. So, one of the things that we focused on this year uh, is the child tax credit outreach expansion. So we've created this child tax credit outreach hub at taxoutreach.org slash coronavirus. When you go to that link, you will see this image of, this is a snapshot of the landing page. So when you scroll down on the landing page, you'll find links to other resources. We created a child tax credit outreach toolkit that includes the messaging and earned media. It also includes a PSA template in English and Spanish. There's a social media toolkit with three different versions, three different types of messaging and images so that you have content to use for more than once so you don't have to continue to recycle the same content. We also developed scripts for calls and text messages as well as news cards as well and I'll show you what those look like shortly. The purpose of this toolkit is to help make your work easier so you can take what you find in the toolkit and anywhere on our website and adapt it for your needs and your purposes. You don't have to ask for permission, you don't have to attribute the information to us. We our, our focus is to create resources for you to use. One of our highlights with our child tax credit outreach was being able to deepen our partnership with Code for America. And we hosted two trainings with Code for America. Uh, to help walk through the process of getting the child. In our first training, which was in July, we focused on the IRS non-filer portal and the child tax credit update portal. For both of these, we created step-by-step -step guides that include screenshots to assist people in using them. When Code for America launched their non-filer tool through getctc.org in September, we did a follow-up training to really focus on how to support people to use that tool. And so now we're focused on helping people to use GetCTC as the source for, for non-filers to share their information with the IRS for the child tax credit advance payments or for stimulus payments. We also recognize how important and how challenging it is to have resources and information to support immigrants and communities that switch. So we have grouped resources from different places um, that can be supportive in those efforts. So this is a glimpse of what the outreach flyer looks like. And there's also a, a smaller scaled down version that's in the form of a postcard. It could be used as a mailer as well. This will be available in seven additional languages. 
We also created a separate toolkit for immigrant families that highlights the eligibility for the child tax credit. We started with a version earlier in the year that highlighted the eligibility for the third stimulus check um, for many immigrant families. And so we have now this updated version that highlights the message of the child tax credit and also Met, and also uh, incorporates a message of the stimulus check eligibility too. And so we have many different resources. Everything on this page is available in English plus five additional languages. So the child tax credit resources. This is a, a summary of some of those resources that we have and direct links to them. You'll get this as part of a follow up. But if you are looking for something, if you just go to tax credit, excuse me, if you just go to taxoutreach.org, you'll be able to find it on the website. But the Get It Back campaign doesn't only focus on the child tax credit. So I want to remind you, some of you remind you, others let you know that we have other resources available as well. We have had a partnership with Cast Campaign of Maryland to create resources for people who are rideshare drivers. And so this is something that we've been updating annually, keeping up with the changes and continues to be a useful resource for many. We also will be updating our EITC resources, especially as there's an EITC expansion that is relevant for the next tax season. So we have our EITC eligibility checker and our EITC estimator tool as well. In addition, we have resources that are specialized for different topics that we learn from you and others that this is an area where there are questions, this is an area where people need support. So we do have special resources on helping uh, people get items as well as resources for volunteer management, recruitment and retention. And we host different trainings and webinars. And so I'd like to invite you to one that we're holding next week to become an AmeriCorps VISTA project sponsor. AmeriCorps VISTAs have been very useful in helping to support VITA sites. And so this is an opportunity to learn more. It may be of a particular interest if you are facing concerns around capacity as you're looking at how you are going to do your service delivery for next year. And if you want to learn more, this is our contact information. If you want to keep in touch with our updates, we send monthly-ish updates on different events and resources that we create as well as other organizations. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Roxy. Uh, really helpful information. And it's always good to, to partner on some of these, uh, these resources. Um, next up, we, oh my gosh, I am messing up my where I am on things. Uh, next up, we have the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. So I'm going to go ahead and hand that over. Thanks, Courtney. Hi, everybody. My name is Lasana Anfune again. Um, I think I could start with just a quick overview in case folks aren't familiar. Uh, the CFPB is a federal agency that regulates financial products and services and inform, enforces consumer protection laws. But we also work with stakeholders across the country to develop tools and resources that are designed to help empower consumers as they navigate the marketplace and work towards their financial goals. And as part of that work, many of you are familiar uh, that I work with my colleague Dave Siminski on CFPB's Tax Time Savings Initiative, which every year works with VITA and other tax prep programs across the country to assist them in imp implementing strategies that encourage clients to take advantage of the tax time opportunity to save as much as their refund as is feasible. Um, the first thing I want to start off by letting folks know is that we are still taking applications for the tax time savings cohort for the 2022 tax season. Uh, we have a few slots left, and I'd like to encourage anyone who's interested in applying to do so. We'll drop the link in the chat and share it with you afterwards for the application. Um, I also want to share that as in past years, uh, we intend to continue to, to work with our partners on this panel as well as others. 
um, to get the word out about important tax credits, including the child tax credit and others, um, and make sure that as many people who are eligible as possible take advantage of this opportunity. As Julieta has already noted, these credits are, can serve as really a, a life raft for a lot of people in trying times who are continuing to struggle to recover uh, from the pandemic, who are already struggling prior to the pandemic. Um, so we're, we're hoping to continue to promote, uh, use all of our resources to promote these tax credits as possible. Um, and I also want to note that while the tax time savings cohort work has focused particularly on encouraging people to save a portion of their tax return, um, especially if they receive a re refund that's larger than usual, uh, we're also very mindful of the fact that people may have incurred debt during the past year or have other financial credits that their tax refund could be better used to address. And we plan to keep that in mind in our work in the coming year. Um, our real intent is to provide useful information uh, in the coming months, both for the consumers and the service providers to help make a money plan for how to make the best use of their tax refund to improve financial stability and well-being. Um, we also plan to join our other national partners to help encourage traditional non-filers to file return in 22 uh, to, to claim all the credits and stimulus funds for which they are eligible. Um, another piece that's important here, we're also sort of supporting efforts to increase volunteerism for VITA. We also, we know that a loss of volunteers during the pandemic has hurt operations for many programs. So among those efforts, we're also working on collaborating with other federal agencies to encourage federal employees to take part and volunteer. Um, I also want to use just the rest of my time to share with you with some resources that we've developed that may be helpful to you in your work. Um, we're sh we'll share all of these links, but I'm going to just share my screen real quick. Okay. Great. Can folks see my screen? Yes. Great. <laughs> Thanks, Courtney. Um, so uh, the first thing I just want to point out is when you go to CF2 uh, .gov, consumerfinance.gov, there's a great deal of resources. It can be a bit difficult to navigate, um, but you'll find that we have a page that's dedicated for resources for tax preparers. And I'll navigate to that page here. If you see, let me know if you see the page changing. I know sometimes there's a delay. Can I get a thumbs up if the page has changed for folks? Great, thank you. So here's the resources for tax preparers page. Um, there we have uh, tax prep planning guides and tools, marketing and outreach resources that are really focused on encouraging savings. Uh, and we also have our most recent edition, which is a set of brief case studies that demonstrate how some of our 2021 cohort participants adjusted their services, their operations and saving messages to the virtual environment. And let me scroll so you can see some of those. Um, here are some of our planning tools and our outreach materials. Um, and as well, we have right here our set of case studies. A bit difficult to navigate with this at the top. There we go. Um, so you can see these planning tools right here, saving activity planning guide for tax prep programs, experience map, et cetera. And outreach materials, again, available for everybody for free about encouraging savings. Um, yeah. So we have materials in English as well as in Spanish. And you're welcome to use any of these resources, posters, videos, graphics, et cetera. Um, I actually also want to share a couple of other resources that weren't really designed particularly for VITA programs, but have a, a, an opportunity to be translated to those contexts. Um, the first would be a guide to remote financial coaching that we very recently released. And this guide was based on the experiences of financial programs that adapted their high touch model to a virtual environment over the past couple of years. Um, let me just scroll to that guide for you. And you can see the guide here. I'll share the link for that as well. There's a full report. And in that guide, uh, we, we understand, of course, this is designed for financial coaching programs, but folks may be interested in seeing how some of their lessons may apply to VITA sites, what tools and strategies different fields might have used in this time, um, and how they plan to potentially leverage some of the changes and lessons learned here continue to apply what they've learned for, for future years. And the final resource that I want to share with folks is our Your Money, Your Goals booklets, um, which some of you may be familiar with right here. 
And these booklets were designed with a variety of different uh, frontline staff that work with uh, of uh, economically vulnerable consumers. Um, these are just a series of free, easy to use booklets that help uh, frontline service providers of any kind walk through some difficult money conversations with their clients. Uh, many sites, VITA sites that we worked with have used the Your Money, Your Goals booklets in their interactions with people that they serve, and they found them to be helpful in broaching these conversations with clients. Um, you'll see we have booklets dedicated to different topics here um, from behind on bills, which is kind of a bringing people back in order or a reasonable state, creating action plans, et cetera, if they have debt, et cetera, that they want to um, address so they can catch up on bills, debt, um, credit, and building savings. Um, so we have these booklets, the, data, the savings ones, well, but others all provide worksheets and tools that folks can do with their clients or clients can do on their own. They can, it's pretty flexible to be used in a variety of ways. Um, and the key thing is they can be accessed online, but they can also be delivered to you for free. So please feel free to take a look and review and see if these are a good fit for your work. So that's all I have to share for today. So I'll hand it back to Courtney to, to lead us through our Q&A. Great, right, thank you so much. Um, let me, I've definitely used your booklets before and they've been a huge help. So excited to have you share that information. Let me go back to nifty little slides. Uh, um, okay, so yeah, there were quite a few amazing questions that came through. And so I'm just gonna go through them um, as they came in. So the first is, um, it was directed at Julieta. Um, so many, um, Amy asked, do you have a spending tracker on this app? So the Propel app. Um, a tracker in the sense of, um, I guess, following how people are spending money they put on the debit product, is that? I'm sure, I can I go ahead really and say yes. Um, yes if, um, uh, Amy wants to make, or helping people, or in budget. terms of helping people budget. Um, so, for their EBT cards, uh, that balance, there's a transaction history that they can see. So yes, there's like help uh, in terms of seeing their transactions for the EBT card. And the same goes for the debit card too. They can see their transaction history there. We don't at this time have a specific um, budgeting tool within the app that I know of. And we don't share um, information on like tracking spending externally if that was a part of the question as well. Perfect. And, do, do, do. and the next question um, that I saw came in, um, well, there were also a lot of comments about IP pins and I'm just gonna let those go because I think there was some helpful <laughs> information in there. Um, but uh, so, do, 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 do. Um, so one other thing, do you have a screenshot guide for navigators within the Propel Providers Card app? Um, that might be helpful as we've encountered some taxpayers who had questions about their provider's card or accessing it in the app, or is there a support chat line where we direct our taxpayers for technical help? Um, so we don't have a screenshot guide, but there is a help center within the app, um, and you can sort of find frequently asked questions, and if you don't find your answer there, um, there is a way to um, submit your question. And um, our team is very responsive to people. So I'm happy to, to talk more offline if with the person who asked that question that they have more, more right. to ask. And then uh, just while I have you, I saw another one that um, about this topic. Uh, does the debit card accept ITINs versus social security numbers? So at this time, unfortunately, we are only accepting people who have social security numbers. Um, we just launched the debit card of a product in July. So it's only a couple months old, not even, um, but I'm hoping that's on the horizon. All right, looks like you're off the hook for now um, with questions. Uh, the next question, Roxy, uh, is for you. Are we allowed to insert links on our websites to your sites? I'm guessing that was for you. Absolutely, we encourage it and you don't need to get our permission to do it first. If there's a helpful resource, please go ahead and link to it how you see fit. Awesome, I love, I 
I've always loved just kind of the humility that you all bring into this of like, nope, just, just use the resources, get them out there. I think that's amazing. Um, and this one was asked during uh, Lasan's presentation, but I do think this is something that is a larger question. So how do we address the fact that many families will not get as large of a tax refund as in previous years since they're getting child tax credits monthly? It seems that savings for these types of taxpayers will decrease. I'm wondering if any of our presenters have thoughts on that. I have some thoughts to share. Um, one, the child tax, the 2021 child tax credit has been expanded in the amount that's available. Previously, $1,400 was refundable for the child tax credit while it's worth a maximum of 2,000. Now people can get 3,000 per child age six to 17 or 3,600 for children under five and under. So when you are comparing the refundable amount of 1,400 to 50, half of these expanded amounts, you are getting more. So most taxpayers are still going to get more. There may be a concern for certain taxpayers if they have other obligations as well. For example, uh, people who have self-employment income and have to pay self-employment taxes, there may be a concern where getting the advance payments could cause them to see a reduced um, refund at tax time. But overall, uh, most people will not see a reduction. And I think it's also an opportunity when you receive questions or concerns about this to remind people that they are getting all of their money, they're getting the full credit, and it's a, more of a, it's more of a um, timing opportunity. So you get to benefit from using some of the money in 2021 versus getting all of it in 2022. Awesome. And as Mary pointed out in the chat, there is also uh, the daycare credit or the child and dependent care credit that is now 100% refundable. So making sure we're doing a lot of outreach on that. Um, I would say also just not to plug my own resources, but on um, getctc.org um, forward slash navigators. Uh, we do have one of our guides is about reasons why taxpayers may want to opt out of the advance payments. Um, and so just if you're encountering clients with that, it has some information about what that means. And then I will always be referring people to, um, to the Center on Budgets uh, information that I know we posted the link about how you can find those resources, but one of them is how to use the CTC update portal that allows somebody to opt out of those payments. Yeah, I, I just wanna add to that, that question. I would encourage everyone if you're talking to a taxpayer and they're worried about, you know, not be getting as much refund or something, I would really encourage people to save the child tax payments, credit payments, if they can, because right now it's a one-time thing. So they're not, even though I think they're going to get a bigger refund, it's got that those um, credits haven't been extended. So the more we can get them to save this, they'll be ready for an emergency. If for some reason they owe self-employment tax, for example, they are never self-employed before and they just got a job where they're self-employed, which will happen this year, um, encourage them to have money and savings so they're prepared for things. Awesome context, JC. Thanks for uh, getting into that. I do um, want to call out Rachel's question. Yeah, it definitely isn't aligned with our, the topics, but I think it's an important one. So in-home child care providers aren't always willing to give their social security number. Is there a way we can claim the credit without it? Uh, to my knowledge, um, and again, I welcome anybody else to speak up in this, but to my knowledge, no. Um, so even if you paper file the return, if that isn't on there, then the IRS has no way to verify that those payments were made. Um, and so I do not believe that is possible. I think there is something that should be said about talking to them about talking to this other person about the earned income tax credit that sometimes they uh, may benefit for additional uh, refunds if they actually claim the income they're receiving as a self-employed individual who's providing childcare. More just my other kind of pitch that I would have out there. 
I think oh. we added something there, yeah. Yeah, Roxy, you want to talk about that a little bit? Yes, I'm looking for this resource from the National Women's Law Center. I will put it in the chat. Um, but they do have some guidance information on if someone's not willing to provide their social security number and you can uh, demonstrate or you at least know that you've made an effort, you've requested it, then there is a, a little bit of a workaround on that. So I will put a link in the chat as soon as I find it. <laughs> and there is, there's an explanation requirement. This is Margaret Irvine. There's an explanation requirement, but that does probably precipitate an examination because they're supposed to be reporting it. They're required to report it, um, these daycare providers. So that will lead into the daycare provider most likely being audited. Thanks, Margaret. I guess I should not speak without doing that research. Um, perfect. Well, and then just to keep us moving along, I just want to go through just a little bit of wrap up and next steps. One, just thank you so much for our presenters on today's panel. Just incredibly helpful information. Really appreciated uh, sharing of your current projects and information. Um, I think this all definitely helps serve the field writ large. So thank you so much. Um, and also just want to call out that uh, coming up, we have the workshop on clearing lines sorting clients into the right model, which I think is something just based on some breakout discussions I've been a part of. It sounds like a lot of people are curious about what are some best practices around how to triage clients correctly. So thank you so much. We hope to see you at that workshop. Um, we're actually going to be able to get off a little bit early unless others have questions or want to stay along, but otherwise give you a whole three minutes back of your day. Thanks so much. <laughs>